Hello and welcome back. So in this one, we are looking at uh, how to match string literals and the modes involved in matching. Okay, so what you do is go to this website here, regex101.com. And then we're going to look at matching here. So I'm going to go to lorem ipsum and copy some dummy text. So you can paste any text that you want. So let's paste there. Mm -hmm. So when you want to match a normal string, like you want to match the like, uh, word is, if I just type is like that, it's going to match every is it finds. So the way this works is it's going to go through the uh, the string one one character at a time and say, uh, is this letter I, is this letter I? When it finds I, then it says, okay, let's see if uh, S What's the next one? The next one is S, and then it will match that. It would be like, okay, good. And then it continues down the road. For example, here it finds I, then N, or oh, that's not the one, it will discard the whole thing. So pretty straightforward stuff. Now, a little bit about the interface here. On this side, we have what are called flavors. So the flavors of this side determine what uh, there are diff slight differences in how these regex engines work. So the one that uh, we are doing here is for PHP. Uh, I think this is the Perl compatible regex. I think that's why it's PCR or something. So this one is the type that matches PHP. This one is the type that matches JavaScript, Python, and so on. So you can see in the list here. So depending on the language that you use the most, you can tick the one that you want to use here because certain rules are slightly different depending on the one you're using here. We'll concentrate more on the PHP one, but most of these ideas can be used transferable to any other language. And then on this side, you have an explanation of what's going on here. So for this, you see it says uh, global pattern flags, which is here. We're going to look at flags shortly. And then it explains what M means. M is, a M is a modifier, but let's ignore that for now. Here, it will tell you the matching information. So it's telling you that it has matched one thing. The first match here is is, and it's telling you the location of this match from, uh, because these are indexed. So they zero, one, two, three, four, and so on. So character number 12 to 14, that's the one right there. Okay, and if you hover on this, you can see that as well. So this is really what we need to know. And also, if you notice here, there's a slash there and another slash there already given. So we don't need to type those when we are typing this. And then there are flags on this side. So now let's take a look at these flags and what they mean. So if I click here, there's a global flag and then there's multi-line which are selected. So let's remove those by clicking on them like that. So we untick them. Now we have no flags. So if you look at the search here, it doesn't seem to have changed anything, but if I try to search for I, you see that it gives me only one match here. So one match, even though there are other eyes here. However, if I click on the flag and click on global, you see that now I match several of these eyes here. So what this means is that if you add the global flag here, it means you want to match every single, uh, you want to find all the matches. If the global isn't there, it's going to find the first one and exit and forget about the others. So if you want it to continue throughout the text and match every single uh, pat pattern that matches, then you use global mode, easy peasy. Now, as I mentioned in PHP, though, it's slightly different because when we go to, um, where is this? This index page right here, as you had seen in the previous video, is that when you do, there's no global uh, matching inside the PHP uh, code here. You can't put a G there. It's not going to recognize it. It will tell you it's not, uh, it doesn't know what that is. That's because they separated the functions if you want a global mode, you use pregmatch all. That's the difference. 
and then this other one just pre match like this is not in global mode it will match the first uh, result and then exit but this one pre match all is in global mode by default okay and of course you've already learned the i is case insensitive here so let's come back here and if i put a capital i of course here you see that it doesn't match that one unless if we put case insensitive there and then now you see it's matching that now if you notice here you see that both of the flags are active at the same time just by typing gi or ig it doesn't really matter both of them will work at the same time you can put as many as you want here uh, let's look at the multi line here also if i if i put uh, lines here for example um, So this one will match uh, beginning and ending of a line. So it's going to treat, if you put a multi-line here, it's going to treat the whole thing as one line here. It will ignore all the line breaks inside your text. That's what that one does. So these are the three that you use mostly. The others, you can use them, but uh, we'll see what which ones we can use, but the, the, the ones that I used most, sorry, are one, two, three. So these are the ones we need to care about for now. So now that we have that, let's remove the insensitive just for testing. We'll leave the global mode there because we need that a lot. And look at the matching information here. Now we have match one, match two, and match three, and so on up to the end here. And then here it tells you the modifiers. This is G global modifier matches all and so on if you add another one it's going to tell you what that one does as well here okay so so far so good i hope you've learned something here in the next video we'll look at doing more advanced stuff than just matching a literal strings here we'll look at patterns okay i'll see you in the next video